Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in the previous video, we discovered that these generic constructions that are assigned to our single family home energy model are not really in line with the climate that we know that the single family home exists in. So in this video, we're going to look into changing the construction set that is assigned to the room of our model so we can hopefully get these constructions to be in line with the climate of Southern California where we know this house exists. So first off the bat, you will remember in the previous video, if I make this larger, that I mentioned that the construction set is dictated all the way back here when we first create our rooms from our, our solid geometries, just like the program that we added in the previous videos. And sure enough, you can see that right next to the program, there is an input on this component to change that construction set so that we can together change those default constructions that are being assigned to this room. And just like programs, Honeybee ships with a library of construction sets that you can apply. And you'll notice that under the Honeybee Energy tab, under this basic properties section, there is a whole, in fact, actually there are two sub tabs that are just devoted to construction sets, to, to looking up the construction sets that, are, that ship with the library, as well as creating your own construction sets from these other uh, subsets, if you will. So first off, I'm going to grab this HB construction set by climate component because this, you'll notice that actually doesn't look all that different than the search programs component. But this is probably the best way to determine a construction for your particular model. And as the title says, the, the construction sets are organized by climate zones, by basically how hot or cold the conditions are. Since you can imagine that a building in a much colder climate the things like solar heat gain coefficient are not going to be all that important. Those could be probably very high uh, without much detriment to the energy use. But things like insulation would be very important in a cold climate. Whereas you'd find the inverse happening in very hot climates, right? The insulation may not be nearly as important, but you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself from the sun. So that's why this, this organization by climate is a particularly useful way to, to select out construction sets. And you'll notice actually under the left side of the basic properties, there is a drop down for the climate zones that basically that the climates of the earth are classified in, into. And I, I can say that pretty much every climate on earth has a climate zone. It is classifiable into this basically eight point system, or maybe I should say nine point system since they recently added a climate zone zero, uh, thanks to climate change. And uh, But I mean, the one thing is that you can probably find a decent, at least one that's very close to where you live, if not uh, being totally certain of, of which, which climate zone you're in right now. And in fact, actually, I'm not going to leave it to chance. I'm actually going to try and look up the climate zone of Southern California to make sure that I've got the right one here. I think my intuition is telling me it's somewhere around like hot and hot or warm, probably maybe more so hot. Don't think it's very hot, but we'll see. Uh, but the easy way that we can check this is if we actually have the stat file that downloads with the EPW files that we'll, we'll eventually use for simulation. So let me see if I can get an EPW file for our climate of Southern California here. I'm going to just open up EPW map. This is all basically refresher from our ladybug course. I'm just going to bring up a button uh, along with this LB EPW map component so that I can just click it to true. And it will open up my uh, EPW map interface in my, my, one of my favorite browsers. And I'm going to search for, I know it's somewhere around like Burbank, California. That's, that's probably one of the closest ones to where my mother-in-law is. Yeah, and we can find a, an EPW file. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of airports here that we can choose from. Maybe this, uh, let's see, I kind of like the Department of Energy. These are one building. Uh, are they all from one building? They may all be from one building. Oh, here's one from DOE. So I'm just going to copy this link to my clipboard so that I can get this, this EPW file. I know I don't need this little thing to launch EPW map anymore, so I'm going to delete that. But with that, that URL to that EPW copied to my clipboard, I'm just going to paste that into a panel by double-clicking, typing double quotes, and set, hitting Control V. All right, so we've got... We've got a URL to our weather files. Let me download that with our Ladybug download weather component. Okay, and uh, and the key file I, I mentioned that has the a record of the climate zone that you know that's numbered from from one to eight, or I should say zero to eight, even because it's climate zone zero now. Uh, I can get that by parsing the stat file with the LB import stat component. 
So let me just connect up the stat file here. And we will see out of this component, once it runs, it'll give us the asteroid climate zone. And let me pull up a panel. And it looks like, uh, ah, I was, I was not quite on the mark when I said uh, hot. It looks like it's just a warm climate over here in, around uh, uh, Van Nuys Airport. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So in this case, I can could just select a, a warm climate zone. Or yeah, I could even plug this straight into this component here if, if I so desired. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll plug in the, uh, you know, just our drop down here now that I've checked it already. But this may be useful for those of you wishing to try and make a, a direct connection with a weather URL that's being used to simulate. You can use this import stat component to automatically uh, get the construction set for that climate zone. So, all right, I'm going to move this off to the side because I'm actually going to come back to this to use at a later later point uh, when we get around to simulating. I'm gonna go back to our construction set by climate and look at what we've got coming out here. So if I connect up a panel, you'll see that right now, once we've connected up the climate zone three, it's giving us a construction set that is steel framed, which is probably good for most commercial buildings, but may not be the best for our residential building. And you can see that same date that existed for our programs at 2019, that is also helping dictate the construction set. So you can imagine the building code has changed over time in terms of the level of insulation and how much uh, solar, solar protection you need on your windows. So this is the most recent building code right now, ASHRAE 90.1 2019. Uh, so maybe I know I know this building's been around for a few decades, so I might choose a, a slightly different vintage here. Let's first change the construction type. So going over to the basic properties, you'll see there is a drop down for the construction types. And uh, I know I know my mother-in-law's house is wood framed like a lot of single family homes. So I'm just going to choose that instead of mass or metal building or or, or steel frame. Uh, and connect that up to there. So that's probably a bit closer to what, what exactly this residence is. And then, you know, I could just take the 2019 code. Actually, let's see let's see what, if there's really that much of a difference. So if I take ASHRAE 90.1 2019, and I now plug that in for the construction set. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to Rhino so we can actually notice the change over here. So right now, we know that the model has just these generic constructions assigned to it. Right, when because we did not change that default construction set, so changing this should update everything, and we should be able to see the preview ultimately in our HB color face attributes component. So let's see if this works. I'm going to connect up the construction set here, and yes, so we see a few of the constructions remain the same. Notably, our, our shade constructions remain the same because the building code doesn't really have that much to say about about shades. But very importantly, it looks like our windows changed. Ah, and you can immediately see a difference here. So the solar heat gain coefficient, you remember it was 0 0.42 in our, our previous file that we checked when we used the generic construction set. We can see now that this construction is meant to have a solar much lower solar heat gain coefficient around 0 0.25. I mean, the U value, you have to forgive that this is an IP uh, value for, for all my friends that are international. Uh, but we can check what the U value is in metric very easily. The only reason why it's an IP is because these constructions are also taken from that Open Studio Standards gem, just like the program types uh, and those commercial reference buildings from the U.S. Department of Energy. But again, like these parameters that govern these constructions in the building code are used to inform the International Energy Conservation Code. So you'll generally find that the assumptions used here are applicable across the globe. But let's just check right here quickly. We can check the R value. Oh, and wow, I can see the roof insulation is a little bit better uh, because I think it was just four or something, or, or sorry, no, it was only two point something earlier in, in SI. Uh, so this is significantly better than that. In terms of the U factor, right, we can check that we can see it's 2.4 in metric. Uh, the name of the construction right, was telling us that's 0 0.42 in IP. Um, but this is great. So, oh, yeah, and we can see in the, the R value is also IP here. So that's 38 in, in, uh, in IP versus the... Was it six point something that we saw in uh, in SI? So all right, so we can see that clearly this is a much generally a much better set of constructions than the than the generic ones, uh, and probably a lot of that just has to do with the fact that this is the most recent building code, so it is going to be more energy efficient. Maybe we can look at uh, take this set of HB building vintages that is also under the HB energy tab here, and use this to check if we let's say use an older building code as our assumption. 
I mean, I don't know exactly how old the house is, but maybe we can go all the way back to like 2004. That was when a lot of the energy codes were, were revised. So maybe it was somewhere around there. And yeah, so we can definitely see something change. The U value is not as insulative, although the solar heat gain coefficient seems to be the same. Uh, what is it? The, the, the attic floor is not quite the same. I guess that was 38, R38 in IP in the most recent code, whereas it was uh, only 30 if you go back in time. I guess if you go all the way back to 1980 or so, yeah, it even gets, okay, even gets less and less uh, uh, R value. So, you know, honestly, this is, well, this may not be all that far from what the house actually is. You can see the solar heat gain coefficient was pretty relaxed back then as well. But I'm going to pick a middle ground, maybe like Astray 90.1 2004 or the, or the International Energy Conservation Code 2006. I think the windows have replaced, been replaced at some point over the life of this building, so they would have been replaced with something that's at least this good. So all right, so now we have a pretty decent assumption for our constructions. We know that our solar heat gain coefficient makes a lot more sense. Um, maybe just to make things a little easier, we don't really need all these components. Just like the, the search programs component, once we've decided on the one that we like, all that we really have to do is copy this text here that we want and say right click and say copy data only and then just paste that into its own panel by double clicking typing double quotes and then control V and so this will allow us to essentially not need those those searching components I can just plug that directly in there and we're all set we're all good um, again maybe I can just leave these off to the side here I'm just gonna group them you know in case I need to reference them in future videos but we don't really need them anymore because now that they're completely divorced from our our energy creation uh, process or energy model creation process here so all right this is great we have now we know that the loads and schedules are, are being dictated by a residential program so therefore we know that our assumptions for things like lighting power density and usage, those are going to be reasonable for this single family home. We know that the constructions are amenable to the, the climate of Southern California and to the age that we know that, that roughly this building, at least the last time this building had some of its windows replaced. So this is great. I think we no longer need this face energy attributes and I'm going to group this together because in the next video, I think we're finally ready. We finally have a model that has all the geometry set up the way that we want. All of the boundary conditions are set up perfectly. It has windows, it has shades, and it has constructions and it has schedules and loads and a, and a program that aligns with all of our assumptions. So we checked a lot of boxes here. I think we're finally ready to go and simulate this model in Open Studio Energy Plus. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video. So thank you guys for roughing it out to this point, but hopefully you're about to see a lot of these efforts pay off.